Well, one would like to say the media in some way does something different uh, where the developing world comes in, but I don't think it does. I think basically news is about bad news. News is about negative things, things which people watch and say, well, thank God I'm not there. And getting good news out of the media is in and of itself very difficult. Good news is apparently some way not news. Um, and of course, there's a lot of very interesting and very positive news comes with development. When it comes to famine, when it comes to war, when it comes to maladministration, the media has a field day. The world, generally speaking, is not really very interested in bringing about greater opportunity for larger, larger numbers of people. I mean, any Martian arriving on Earth would say, well, I think the biggest story here is that this extraordinarily wealthy world is unable to feed itself. What an incredible thing. How much coverage do we terrestrials give that? The year in which we're speaking saw the 10th anniversary of 9-11. More footage, more grief, more suffering was portrayed over a period of a week on the 3,000 people who died in horrible circumstances in New York than has been deployed on the tens of thousands of people living in abject poverty, millions of people in abject poverty, uh, in starvation circumstances and the rest. You know, what, what kind of a world is that? If you take Haiti, for example. Now, the awful thing is we've never been very interested in Haiti's development, but my God, when the earthquake struck, in Britain alone, the Disasters Emergency Committee raised more money for that single disaster than anything they've ever raised in history. Um, that speaks rather well of the audience. The only trouble is it took a disaster to do it. I think that the difficulty is that these, these accounts of disaster are not balanced with another account of the wonderful things that are being achieved. The, the more hinterland, the more environment one can provide for a story, the more people can become engaged with it. Um, you know, most news bulletins will give a story like Somalia two minutes max, and maybe a minute. You know, just see distended bellies and, and bones of dead camels, etc. It doesn't really kind of lead to a wider understanding of what's going on. We're entering the golden age of journalism um, because of new media, because of the social media. You know, in the old days, we had the one track. I could broadcast for a week and get two letters in green ink underlined in red. There'd be no two-way traffic, no email, no Twitter, no Facebook. Now there's all this, and there's engagement, and, and it's much, much easier now. We can't think in one-track terms of radio or television. We are in a multi-platform age, and the chances of these horrible disasters or of great development escaping without being reported are getting smaller. We recently um, transmitted a program about the atrocities committed during the ending of the civil war in Sri Lanka. Now, this was, in a sense, a tribute to new media because we had images that we would never have been able to obtain in a previous age. During the massacre in Srebrenica in the former Yugoslavia, during the massacre in Rwanda, there were no images. What was extraordinary about Sri Lanka was that for the first time, the victims had had mobile phones upon which they could film what was actually happening. And our film was made up of little snippets of uh, film and stills which had survived the deaths of the people who'd taken the pictures. And then the, on the other hand, there was the footage taken by the soldiers themselves you know, fishing out their own mobile phone and shooting trophy footage of them abusing and molesting women and of actually executing people. That's an amazing breakthrough. 